Hey, this is Jason Burns. I am here with Ryder Saran of Ryder and Rolling Thunder. Uh, Ryder, you know, before I learned about your music, what was so cool is my favorite birthday growing up was when I got a G.I. Joe thing called the Rolling Thunder. So I knew it was oh. a good omen and uh, opened up the music and it was just as good as that birthday. So. Oh, goodness. Well, that's high praise. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know the... The album, the EP, is uh, about a month away now from release. I'm curious what this period is like, this sort of lull before the storm where you're waiting, but also really releasing singles and just kind of uh, waiting it out. Um, well, it's it's honestly pretty fun right now because all the, the hard part is over. All the heavy lifting is done, you know, got when you hear the song like 20 times through <laughs> writing it practicing it playing it live making sure it works and then recording it yeah and then hearing the mixes <laughs> and then watching the music video for it you know it's kind of like it can get like all right let's let's hear another song you know <laughs> yeah that's so nice once it's all done that you can just sit back and you know appreciate the song again <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm curious for you if, is this something that you've had to sit on for a while? Because I know a lot of bands and artists have sort of, you know, been holding music back as the world kind of got back to normal so you could properly promote it. Was this something that you've had to sit on? Um, not for too long, because uh, we, rec well, I guess it has been a while, but since everything slowed down last year, you know, it didn't feel like there was a big rush to get stuff done, but because yep. we re recorded it in november of 2019 mm. so you know a few you know just a few months before yeah. everything happened, and then it was um just uh well nothing nothing's going on so we can kind of wait on it for a while and you know finally got back got some mixes got our path laid out in front mm -hmm. of us and just went for it and yeah, got it all mixed and mastered and put together. Does the mating, the, the waiting make you second guess things at all? Do you start to say, okay, well, maybe we can tweak this a little bit more here and a little bit, a little bit more of this here? Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> even, even once it comes out, I'll be, you know, anything I've ever released, it'll be like, uh, I'd say, probably a month where i think this is great this is the best thing we've ever done and then the month after that i start hearing all the little things i would have changed yeah yeah but it's because you're a different person with sure. different experiences so sometimes it's hard to listen back to your own stuff because you've got this whole new perspective and a whole new uh um i would say a whole new appreciation or you have got a lot more information that you could build on mm. but the beauty so, of that yeah. is, is that the songs can just develop over time in your live set and they change and morph and become new in a way oh yeah and that's that's fine too and you know there's no rule that you can't record a song twice if you True. didn't but i'm really happy with how these have all turned out this definitely it feels it feels really good. I'm real happy with how all the songs have how you know just how they've how they've all sounded. What what I love about the album writer is that each song starts off where I feel like I'm pushing open the doors to the club and I just hear the music start and I want to go in and I want to hear. You know what I mean? It's just like it's an instant gut punch. Oh yeah, in, in a good way. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> that's uh that's um. Definitely, I know one of the songs, uh, Main Street Shuffle, yeah. that's, uh, a, this is the next single we'll be putting out, I think tomorrow, actually, is the next single coming out is Main Street Shuffle. Mm -hmm. And that one I wrote, like, in a bar. Yeah. Or about going into a bar. And it's just a wild, fun Saturday night kind of thing. Which, which is what we need now. I mean, as a society, we need those wild Saturday nights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they'll come back all across the board here soon, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, something that I thought was interesting was that, you know, these days I get a lot of EPs sent to me and they have four songs on it. You guys have seven songs on this EP. 
Why not an yeah. album? Why? It's like this. It's a. It's the meatiest EP I've ever seen. Yeah, it's it's like the double EP. <laughs> <laughs> I think it. Well, the it was we went down there and or we went to Muscle Shoals to record it, and it was the idea was well, let's see how many songs we can we can bang out we chose songs that we knew we could um, do efficiently while we were down there. Mm -hmm. So along just ended up coming out fine. And it was like, okay, let's do the next one. Let's do the next one. So there's some that I think there's one or two that didn't make uh, this EP, but it just, it seemed like too short to be a whole album and you know for the price of an ep you can get a nearly an album's worth of material i like it that's <laughs> the sales pitch right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> so in terms of you know you you mentioned uh, you know getting a game plan together at the start of our conversation and and putting putting the things on track to to move forward when you're doing that, how do you decide which are going to be the first couple of songs that introduce people to this record? Like, how did you go about deciding what would be the first single? What would be the second single like that, that process? Um, so the first single was actually uh, my manager, Jennifer, or it was her idea to do the song Eyes Like Diamonds as our first single, because it's a kind of a retrospective song. You're looking back on your past and it's a little bit more mellow, which seemed to agree more with the times we're in mm -hmm. right now. A, a plaintive, maybe, would be the would be the word, mm -hmm. but um, just a little bit more mellow, subdued. Ah, there's a good there one. You go. <laughs> there's a, yeah. So that was kind of the idea behind that being the first single, and you know now things are opening back up. Mm -hmm. and people can slowly start to go out and do things so these next two singles are i think progressively rowdier <laughs> <laughs> so what would somebody learn about you about the band in sitting down and listening to the ep front to back like what would what would be the takeaway oh i would say it would be that i think every member of the band just has a deep appreciation for all all kinds of american music um country blues rock and roll jazz mm -hmm. it's kind of you know it's, if you listen hard enough it's all in there and you know to me it's all it's all just rock and roll but <laughs> <laughs> um that's probably that this this is a band that really appreciates appreciates the roots that we're built on mm you know one of the things that you know i touched on this already is like each song sort of felt like i was walking in the club there was a live vibe you know a lot of bands try to pull that off on, in the studio and it doesn't work but i i get the feeling that you know your energy on the stage is carried over into the studio I, it just feels like that live energy is there was that a goal uh definitely it was also a matter of efficiency um we were working with a 16 track tape machine so it seemed the best way to go about it. Well, and this is, this is how I've always recorded mm -hmm. my own material is bass, drums, and guitar in one room mm. together, you know, or at least being able to have eye contact with mm -hmm. each other um, and laying down that track together. Cause that's what gives it that live cohesive feel. And also I don't think we used a click track for any of this either. So I like that sometimes the, the tempo can kind of sway and move a little bit in accordance with the, the, I don't know, the emotion of the song. Yeah, which I'm you guys thinking. are in a room looking at you, each other, you're vibing off of each other as well. Yeah, and that's, that's something really important to me. I, I like being able to have that going, mm. that live energy. Well, it, it translates, you know, and I'm curious, Ryder, now that the album is done, you have some separation between calling rap on it and where you are now. What are you most proud of it? What, what are you going to hold it up and say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that we achieved X, Y, and Z. Oh, I mean, 
getting to record in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, that's probably, I, you know, I didn't think I would be doing that mm. for a long time, <laughs> <laughs> if ever. So that was, uh, you know, that's, that's a bucket list thing right there. Mm. So I would say, and like I said, the, uh, the whole band is very appreciative of American music and American music history. So Muscle Shoals is the name we are all very right. familiar with right. <laughs> so but, you know you're so appreciative of music history but i'm curious what your own history would think of this what would the writer who first picked up a guitar think about this album would it would it blow his mind oh probably because it's got a lot of i would say some of the songs have a pretty pretty deep rolling stones influence mm -hmm. uh a couple of them for sure uh but definitely uh my younger self picking up a guitar would be like whoa that's you <laughs> and you wrote that how did that happen <laughs> wait that's us <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a very bill and ted moment there where it's you know you cross paths <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know uh you know finally Ryder, i'm curious as you put this out into the world, you put new material, whatever it is out into the world. How do you sort of manage your own expectations? Like, what do you go in hoping comes out of putting music out into the universe? And mm. how do you keep from, from either uh, being surprised or, or being disappointed, whatever that is, based on your own, uh, what you anticipate to happen? Um, well, you know, I guess it's kind of been a managing expectation since I was younger because being uh an arrogant 17 year old i was like gonna take the world by storm by the time i'm 21 <laughs> and then i turned 21 and that didn't happen and so you know you just move it back it, you move the goalpost back a little bit that's all yeah <laughs> but then it's like well you know taking the world by storm really isn't all it's cracked up to be and it's not i mean it's probably not gonna happen but the important thing is making sure that you're happy with what you're producing mm -hmm. and if you feel good about it that's what matters if you can go make some money on it make a living on it mm -hmm. that's great and um as far as managing the expectations i guess i don't expect um a whole lot it's always like i want it to of course i want it to like get a million listens on yeah. spotify yeah which is achievable yeah but what does uh, that mean Ryder? that's what I, i'm still trying to sort of understand like to like qualify what that means in in, to, in today's day and age does that mean something to you because you hear a lot of artists talk about how uh, a million listens doesn't necessarily translate to making money off of those streams you know, yeah and then you have to take those streams and turn them into audience members at a show so it's always it's one more step to the next achievement in a way. Yeah, I would say it's mostly a, it's about like a sign of acceptance mm. that we're all looking for. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think everybody to some degree is looking to be accepted in who they are. And the mm. thing with music is, you know, when you're writing it, when you're performing it, uh, when the audience applauds for you, that's them telling you that they're okay with who you are. Mm yeah because you yeah. put who you were out to them and they said that's cool so i think uh having you know a, a million listens on this or that may not be a lot of money but it would definitely you know wake it up in the morning and be like hey <laughs> i got a million listens on there that's yeah. pretty cool <laughs> yeah and, and to know that you're creating something in your space in your part of the world that is then going out to the entire world and, and you're making fans all over in places you've never even visited before, which is cool and crazy and wild in this day and age. Yeah, absolutely. And so hopefully, uh, hopefully we get there with uh, these next few releases too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Ryder, what's the best way for people to connect with you, the band and the EP, which is about a month out from, from hitting? Um, uh, band camp. Mm -hmm. It would be Rider and Rolling Thunder on Bandcamp, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Spotify. We're on Spotify. Mm -hmm. 
and those are those are the best places to find us uh we do have a video for the song eyes like diamonds that mm-hmm. first single we we released that is on youtube right now mm-hmm. so trying to a new single due out the 30th right yeah i think i'm pretty sure it is tomorrow awesome. is the first is our second single yep Awesome. Well, Ryder, thank you so much for giving us some of your afternoon and, and talking to us about all things uh, the band and, and the new EP. I appreciate you giving us some of your time. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you for letting me be on here to talk. Awesome, Ryder. Thank you. The new single is uh, amazing. I just, uh, like I said, it just feels like you're walking into a, a bar and you're, you're ready to party all night. So uh, I hope yeah. that the world listens and they get ready to party with you guys. I hope so, too. (laughs) Awesome, man. Take care.